community participation could be metro communities to drive this integration across very deep ecosystems and all top courses and applications, which is my colleagues here is supposed to be speaking to. Thank you. Sure, well, thank you very much. Jeff, I think you might have a few slides too that you want to do. Yes, uh, George invited two slides. So okay. Now the second one is about challenges, <coughs> so I don't know if you want that to be so deferred. We're just going to nail it in the first five minutes then, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> However you wish to do it. Okay. Great. Okay, this was just a cartoon just to illustrate. Um, so I'm going to come at this from a little, a slightly different perspective. I'm not really a data scientist, but more coming at it from the open data point of view, and also because NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is part of the Department of Commerce. The project I'm going to tell you about was actually in part designed to help stimulate some commerce. So uh, we produce a bunch of data from, as this, the picture on the left shows, from the bottom of the ocean to the surface of the sun. Uh, tens of terabytes of data per day of observations and forecasts. And in theory, all of it is publicly accessible except for some very limited uh, things like fisheries enforcement data and so forth. But So in theory, you can get to it, but in practice, it's not always easy to get to all the data. Some of it, for example, is stored on robotic tape, magnetic tape drives. Uh, it takes a while to order it. Um, it's been found that it may take more than one day to order one day's worth of data, so you can sort of never catch up. Um, and then some is just not accessible at all, in particular um, intermediate time steps of model runs. So we might give you, say, every tenth step, but there's the intermediate time steps are not all there. So um, that's an issue. And another issue is, as uh, a speaker earlier was kind of alluding to, many people don't want just numbers. They don't want a whole bunch of floating point numeric data. They just want an answer. Want the data distilled down to one bit, you know, yes or no. So we started this project a couple years ago. It's, a, it's an R&D project, a cooperative research and development uh, project with five cloud providers, Amazon, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and Open Commons Consortium. The latter is a uh, uh, kind of nonprofit academic thing out of, uh, Okay. Maybe, yeah, yeah, but maybe it's <laughs> University of Chicago, sorry. So, uh, and so the idea is we have Earth observations, we have model outputs. We are um, not turning off any of our existing kinds of services. We have this catalog, we're working on metadata, OGC uh, compatible access services, you know, good data formats, that kind of stuff. We're still going to do that, but can we push a copy of the data, or at least some of the data, to the cloud, to one or more clouds? so that other people can make better use of the data and, and take value out of the data that we haven't realized. You know, we make measurements, we send them to a weather model or something like that, we produce the weather, or forecast the weather, excuse me. Uh, but it may be that there's other kinds of information or value-added products and services that people might be able to, to do with our data if only it were easier to use them. So the idea is, to put the data next to compute capability and let people compute directly on the data without having to transfer. So in this R&D project, so far we've transferred one large data set, which is the NEXRAD, Next Generation Radar Level 2 data. We're working on geostationary satellite and weather model data. And we have seen some very good benefits in terms of um, reduced time to do reprocessing on the data now that they're all there, and <coughs> reduced load significant on our NOAA infrastructure. More people are now getting the data from Amazon, say, than from our archive. Um, and many of them are computing directly on the data instead of getting the, the data out. So what I think is interesting is that the cloud is in some ways a movement away from the system of systems idea based on interoperability and sort of returning back to the old data warehouse idea where all the data is in one mainframe. The problem is um, there's no central control about how the data gets in there. So we've just kind of moved stuff there in like a messy attic and we might we, we just try to transfer it as is, uh, same formats, uh, however it was organized on our end might be how it would be organized in the cloud. So I think one of the issues, and now if you want to the next slide, is how do we deal with all this, um, one more, um, how, how, do, how do we deal with this? So there's a few challenges that I think OGC can help solve. Um, uh, one, well, let me start with the one at the top here, is um, could we have very good uh, web, OGC web service instances deployed in the cloud on NOAA data? What's the right ones to do that? Who's, who's got software that will, will We'll do that well. Uh, disparate data formats that we're, we're, we're loading up there, it'd be nice to standardize on that. I think there's a lack of a uniform approach to organizing the data in the cloud, um, just based on the, the time and space and individual sensors and so forth, at least organizing our data in the cloud, I won't speak for everybody. Um, don't have, I think, a very fine-grained data indexing or search tool if I want to know just exactly, exactly what's available right here for this period of time. 
may be based on some other attributes. And I think that, uh, Keith Harris talked about a data source registry earlier today, kind of talked about that. Or thinking, what about a potential use case? What if I wanted to see what the world is like right now based on NOAA data as new data keeps coming in? How do I update that common picture based on all these disparate streams of data? And that's going to be very hard if I've just you know, sent the data to multiple clouds and everything's organized differently and I've got to sort of remember that. So there's some other challenges which are not really OGC specific, which I put on the, put on the slide, but uh, uh, those are some of the challenges I see. George, can you bring up the While we're switching the slide set, um, Jeff, I noticed you had the uh, Open Cloud Consortium on there? Yes, Open Commons Consortium. No. Open Commons? Yeah. Uh, how deeply are we working with that community in terms of intercloud interoperability? Ooh. It's a different, it's not the Cloud Council, if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, because there is an internet, I think there is a Cloud Consortium. And, yeah. Uh, and we broached a uh, a few discussions with them in the past probably would be good to yeah. reenact that. As, as far as I know, with this project, they're not doing yeah. intercloud oper interoperability with our data. Is, okay. is, is Alan Seal involved in that uh, experiment? Alan Seal? Is it the person reading that? I can't remember. Okay. Okay. It's been a while. Well, the guy that is. didn't show up. <laughs> I don't know that this is connected to that machine. So we can push the button. We'll push the button. What you say? Yes. All right, so I'm just going to give a little background here. I'm going to do it quickly. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the NSF's Big Data Innovation Hub efforts. Okay, very few people. Good, I have a fresh audience. So in 2012, the White House initiated the Big Data R&D Initiative. $200 million were invested from across six federal agencies. <laughs> The National Science Foundation is part of this effort. That's me. Oh, you got the, I got the mic. You got the mic? Okay. Uh, launched the Big Data Innovation Hubs. There are four hubs. Right, there are four hubs across the United States. Um, they are focused on applied research. So many of you are aware with NSF. Research. They fund cyber infrastructure development. They fund education in big data and data science, computer science. The Big Data Hubs is their first effort to, to look at public private partnerships around big data and data science. There are four hubs across the country. They're based on census lines. So the South Big Data Innovation Hub, of which I'm from, uh, goes everywhere from Texas to Delaware. So I don't typically think of Delaware as being in the South, but they are. But Washington, D.C. is, so we're happy. Uh, the goals, to stimulate an agile and sustainable national big data or big geodata innovation ecosystem, but particularly to accelerate partnerships among people in business, academia, government, who apply data science and analytics to advance science, to address real world problems, and to spur economic development in the region. So there is a heavy regional focus, although the National Science Foundation is also encouraging us to reach out internationally, so we're talking to the Big Data Value Association in Europe, and we were just suggested that we also reach out to Asia. Um, so our, our <coughs> responsibilities are still evolving. We're very much in startup mode, and there will be some regional variants between the hubs. But in essence, we have four key roles, and that is you know, helping to catalyze or accelerate public-private partnerships that bridge different sectors, to bridge data science with domain science, to solve real-world problems, to help grow communities of practice around research and development, connecting data scientists and domain scientists, sharing best practices, lessons learned, and success stories. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, so I am reaching out to OGC, I'm reaching out to the Earth Science Information Partnership and other organizations that are already doing this to see if we can be force multipliers. Uh, enable data sharing and shared cyber infrastructure collaborations, resources, and services, and I'll get to that in a moment, and build data science capacity in education and workforce development. So we had a kickoff all hands meeting in December of 2015 at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, 250 participants, of which 68 <coughs> proposals for projects were developed. Those weren't individual PIs, those were all required to be team projects 
that engaged across sectors. Um, I think we'll be announcing by the end of September the winning awards. So NSF is putting in $10 million uh, each year across all four hubs to sponsor these projects. Again, they're more focused on applied research. So when we get to applications, the hubs, at least the initial spoke proposals in the south, were focused on a few verticals, including healthcare, uh, data, or smart cities, smart connected <laughs> communities, privacy and security, industrial big data and energy, so advanced manufacturing, material science, natural resources and hazards. And the Midwest is focusing heavily on uh, digital agriculture. Uh, the West is doing more open innovation approaches. The Northeast has a finance and data science group. So there is some regional variation. In the South Hub, of course, a lot of coast. They'd be very interested in water data science, very interested in hazards, um, as well as smart cities. Um, so we have a cyber infrastructure group. Right now, it's being led by Regan Moore, uh, the IRODS and DataNet Federation. Uh, and uh, Raja uh, here at, Re at the Renaissance Computing Institute, uh, Victor Hazelwood from Exceeds. Um, we've got some, a lot of NDS, National Data Service representation. So taking the DataNet Federation services and beginning to move them more towards production. So they have a year extension on that grant, and we hope to be collaborating closely with them. Exceeds <coughs> is very much interested in collaborating with the hubs. Um, and the big uh, cloud providers are also coming to the table. So Microsoft has offered $3 million in Azure credits. Uh, Google, Amazon, IBM are all interested, so stay tuned for news there. Um, so we'll be providing those services to members. Um, and just lastly on education, um, we are connecting data science graduate students with industry and data science faculty with industry. So we want to have that close partnership so just to talk quick about applications and I'll be finished. Mobile health IoT is going to be a big area of focus for the South Hub, identifying and prioritizing research challenges and standards for data science infrastructure for mobile health. Um, there's been a lot on the sensors, not as much on the data analytics, uh, particularly with the precision health, uh, precision medicine initiative by the White House that will likely be continued depending on the administration that comes in, but they're looking for a million volunteers. So and we don't have necessarily standards for that. We need open standards. Um, water, I think, has already been talked about because the water center's got, is it 2.4 million sensors? Now you've also got 1,700 citizen science groups and volunteer groups. How do we integrate that data? Around smart cities, we've got distributed sensor networks, say, for air quality. We also have an increase in number of groups, uh, volunteer groups who are measuring. So how do we integrate crowdsourced observations with distributed sensor network data. Um, digital ag we mentioned, and water. So with that, we'll pass it on. Thank you. Uh, I can see a lot of, as you were talking through all that and looking at the domains you were putting up in terms of the areas of interest in each of the regions, I can see a lot of inter interpersonal connectivity with OGC programs. And particularly IoT and other topics, I think are really domain. So let's, let's put that back into the discussion after we're done. Charlie. Yeah. So Mark, I think you asked me to talk about three things. I got. Uh, you got the mic. Can you hear? So, uh, yeah. Works well. What What the hell InQtel is? Um, <laughs> some <laughs> applications we're seeing out there and um, uh, ways that uh, you know, OGC can sort of expand. Right. So the first one. Uh, when when AQTEL is mentioned in the media, it's usually described as the venture capital arm of the CIA. Right? <laughs> uh, so both parts of that expression are incorrect. Uh, it's not part of the CIA. It's technically a private, independent, uh, nonprofit 501c3, which usually blows people's minds when they hear that. Uh, and clearly, because of that, it's not part of the CIA. We work closely with the CIA, the rest of the intelligence community, um, but I am definitely not a government employee. Um, and sort of what we do is, like a VC, uh, we go out, uh, we um, identify, and, uh, identify, adapt, and deliver uh, innovative technologies coming out of startup companies and help transfer that technology uh, to government customers, right? Because there's so much innovation going out in Silicon Valley, in Boston, and elsewhere, uh, and if the only solutions that the government has come from the Beltway Band, that's got help us all, right? But, you know, two guys in a garage in Palo Alto have no idea how to sell to the government, and the government has no idea how to buy from two guys or gals in a garage in Palo Alto. So InQtel sort of exists to bring those uh, worlds together. Uh, so yes, like a VC, we do invest in private startup companies 
Uh, but it, we're a strategic investor, so we're not investing for profit. We invest for technology transfer and, and helping make those uh, connections. Uh, we invest in companies, uh, lots of companies in the geospatial domain. Uh, for example, uh, Boundless, which is sort of the commercial effort around uh, the open geo suite, providing commercial support and enterprise solutions around those tools. Uh, companies like uh, Orbital Insight, uh, which use data science and deep learning uh, to automatically analyze millions of commercial satellite photos from companies like Digital Globe, uh, Airbus, Planet Labs coming online soon, uh, and essentially distilling those images down to single answers, right? So they do things like count cars in parking lots uh, to help uh, forecast uh, quarterly earnings reports for retail uh, companies, uh, remotely measuring um, worldwide oil inventories based on floating lid uh, oil tanks, um, real estate construction, agriculture, that sort of thing. Uh, that's been enabled by lots of advances in technology, uh, the availability of data, uh, advancements in algorithms, hardware, cloud computing. Uh, the data is a big piece of that, though. So another one of the initiatives that Intel has are these various labs.